Each week we do something called a community moment. Uh, for those of you who are new with us, a community moment is an opportunity for a member of our very own community to come up and share with us really anything. Maybe it's a book they're reading, maybe it's just something that's been on their mind. Um, there are very few topics that are off topic for a community moment. And today's presenter is a longtime member of our community, someone who uh, has given many excellent community moments in the past. Um, she told me her topic and it raised a lot of questions. I'm gonna tell it to you now. When birds crap on you, here's our community moment presenter, Emmerette. So, I was in Harmon Park the other day, and suddenly we were paddle boating, and I was, I was having fun, and suddenly on the side of the pond, these birds just came in a flock and swooped down and nearly crapped on my face. <laughs> and, and that actually brought to mind a very interesting topic that I'd like to share with you today. So when birds crap on you. And uh, my companion and I, we had very, very different reactions to this phenomena. Uh, he ducked for cover, and I just sort of, oh, look, birds, great. And, and this difference in the reaction really, really sparked a thought in me. I was like, well, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen if really the birds did crap on my face? I'll wipe it off. Okay, no big deal. Move on with your life, right? I mean, if, if they happen to crap on your face while your mouth is open, then that's a slightly different matter. Requires a little bit more intervention. But still, on the whole, not too bad. And so it really reminded me of how, how we can really choose to react to certain situations like birds cropping on your face in our lives. So I'd like to pose several different ways that we can react that could possibly be more helpful than flailing and screaming and possibly jumping into the lake to avoid the birds. <laughs> Number one. So I would like to pose actually one passive method and three active methods. So number one is to just sort of let it happen naturally. Maybe, so I'd like to pose an example from my childhood. When I was a child, I lived in Maine and it was very, very cold up in Maine, as you may know or may not know. We have snow. No, not Houston snow. White Christmas is not an inch on ground. It is more along the lines of three feet, four feet. No way to actually get out of your house. And so the situation that I'd like to tell you about is one, one time we did have a snowstorm, an ice storm, in fact, and we got snowed in with three, four feet of snow and couldn't go anywhere. Electricity was out for about a week in Maine. It's very cold. No electricity means no heating. And so you, you could think, well, hey, this is a pretty crappy situation over here. But thankfully, I don't really know why. Our particular, our particular family did not take it quite as badly as we could have. Actually, what we did was we had a great time. It's actually one of my best childhood memories because we were all huddled together, freezing cold, and we had a neighbor, thank goodness, we had a neighbor, Uncle John, who was super prepared, emergency preparedness, up the wazoo. And he had stacks and stacks of firewood that he lent us. Well, really, just gave it to us. And, and he just gave us these stacks of firewood that we could burn in our wood-burning stove. It was like going back to the dark ages. It was great. Uh, and being a child at the time, I didn't really know. I was like, oh, hey, look. We can eat ramen on a wood-burning stove. This is great. And we sat there, played board games, because frankly, there was nothing else to do. And we had a grand old time, and it's one of my best memories. And that's one way to deal with birds crapping in your face. You just sort of go with the flow, and somehow it works out. But that way isn't really reliable. So let me tell you about the three other ways that are a little bit more active that you can implement in your life so that when things happen, you're okay. So number one, I'd like to give you an example. Last year, I was moving. And as many people who have moved before, it is not really fun. It's uh, somewhat of a hassle, actually. And I happened to be moving on July 4th weekend. So, <laughs> thankfully, there
there weren't that many people on the road, or perhaps I had avoided them somehow. So, <clears throat> as many people with U-Haul experience know, generally you would park in the rental, re rental trailer uh, lot, and then you would take your U-Haul trailer, and you would do your thing and come back and retrieve your car, right? So this lovely Sunday, Sunday evening, I drive back to the U-Haul lot intending to retrieve my car with my aunt in tow because she helped me to move. Turns out that <laughs> car, my car had gotten pinned in from the side by another U-Haul trailer who had very kindly actually jammed my car into the curb and I couldn't move. My car was, I, we tried, we really tried, went forward, backwards, my car could not get out of the spot. And so, as most people would do, it's not a great situation, so I had called U-Haul, right? U-Haul, they're supposed to fix things, they're supposed to send managers out to, you know, make sure that their customers are happy. I called them, I said, sorry ma'am, there's nothing we can do for you. Maybe you can wait until Monday. It's a holiday weekend. Um, I sort of need my car. Uh, no, we, we can't call our managers out for this. So just wait till Monday. What? <laughs> and, so, and so my aunt, my, my aunt and I, we were sitting on the curb, <laughs> sitting on the curb in the U-Haul parking lot. And we thought, well, maybe, okay, there's another way. We'll call the police. Maybe the police can do something about this, all right? Yeah, call the police. It takes them an hour or two to arrive. Of course, no one's dying or bleeding, so of course they're going to take a little bit of time. Policeman arrives. Our one and only hope. He comes, takes one look at the car, and says, Sorry, I can't really write an incident report on this, because it's not actually an incident. It's a park and run. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to do about this, but the policeman, the officer, was very nice, and so he said, hey, you know, maybe I can call the U-Haul people for them, for, for you. Maybe they'll respond a little bit more to authority. Called, sorry, sir, we can't bring a manager out right now. Maybe you can wait until Monday. And all of us sort of stared at each other for a moment, just aghast at this type of customer service. But then, thankfully, my, the, the policeman had a very, very nice offer. He said, hey, why don't I take you in my cop car to where your other car is? Because I was like, huh, right? And we we're like, oh yeah, you know, it's only one or two blocks away. It's really that, not that far. He's like, yeah, no problem. And I, so I got to ride in a cop car. It was so exciting. I swear. Like, I've never been in a cop car before, and it probably won't ever, ever be in a cop car ever again. So it was super, super, super duper awesome. And, and, um, and so, um, so from, from going to dismal despair of I couldn't get my car to ecstatic because I got to ride in a cop car, one of the lessons that crystallized from this was, hey, one way, when birds crap on your face, look for fun and stay curious. Because once I got into that cop car, I had a lot of questions. Hey, why is the buckle on the outside? Hey, why is this plastic seating? Oh my goodness, this is so cool. There's grating on the front and the back. Oh, so cool. I actually was so excited that I took a picture uh, I, I told my aunt, I was like, no, you have to take a picture of me in this cop car with the grating behind me. It's so exciting. And so if you want to see the picture, I have the picture. I don't have a projector screen, but you can come and come to talk to me later uh, after this and I'll show you the picture for sure. I even took a picture with the policeman because he was super nice. And so I've actually got a picture with the policeman in the cop car. It's pretty awesome, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> so, I've got experience sitting in a cop car. I mean, who knew? So, so that is method number one of, <laughs> method number one of actively changing the situation. <coughs> Look for fun and stay curious. So number two, use mantras. Another personal story way back when, 
Now this is also happened during summer, interestingly enough, senior year of high school. I was volunteering at the Children's Museum, and so we had to, my, my dad had to send me there every single day during the summer. Unfortunately for us, we had a dark green Lincoln leather seats, no AC, in the middle of Houston summer. And as many of you who have experienced Houston summer with no AC may confirm, it is not very pleasant. And so, <laughs> and so at first, I would sit down and say, oh my God, you know, it's, it's so hot, I can't stand it, uh. And so I was having a lot of trouble with this situation and it was a pretty crappy day. But afterwards, I thought, well, you know, mind over matter, mind over matter, I've been reading some books and, and so I started to use mantras. I was like, huh, you know, maybe I can will this situation away. <laughs> so I started, I'd sit down and I would think, it's not hot. It's not hot. It's just warm. It's relaxing. It's like a sauna, right? A sauna. It's nice. It's warm. It's okay. And actually, interestingly enough, that worked. It was really weird. It worked. And I passed the entire summer doing this pretty much every day, and I was fine. It was great. I'd walk in with a huge sweat patch on my back, and everyone would ask me what was wrong and whether I'd taken a shower or something, but hey, at least the car ride was great, and I was super happy, and I got a sauna every day, so hey, you know? Silver lining, right? And so the second method that I would like to pose to you is use mantras. They actually work. It's very interesting. Just repeat to yourself, it's okay. And somehow it works. So, number three and the last one, active, uh, active ways to turn your crappy day around. It is look for solutions. So accept the, accept the situation and look for solutions. So I'd like to give you yet another story. <laughs> Getting a lot of stories today. And, um, when I, when I was a freshman year, uh, freshman year in college, if you guys can recall, college, recall your college days, do you remember how much you had in your head and how much you had really learned from college after your freshman year? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Basically, nothing. <laughs> and so I was looking for chemical engineering internships, knowing absolutely nothing but basic science and no chemical engineering. And surely that would work out for me, right? Right. I, yes, totally. Yes, shaking your head, that's totally the reaction that I had. And so when you're looking on job websites, all of them say, well, freshmen, sophomores can apply, but really, sophomores, sophomores. I'm like, Hmm, I pretty much have no chance if I do it this way. And so I'm like, well, you know, when when in doubt, when in doubt, look for a solution. So I'm like, I'm not going to apply to these these silly internships. It doesn't look like they're biased towards me. They're actually biased against me. So I might as well do it another way. And so, thank goodness, the internet, the internet is a wonderful thing, by the way, tangent. And uh, the internet. The internet was alive and young at that time, and so I decided that I wanted, I would just cold call every single industrial company that I found that had anything to do with my area of interest. Polymers. So I looked it up, looked it up at Mick something, I can't even remember the name of the, of the phone book anymore, but yes, I cold called about 40 to 50 companies just straight up saying, hey, I'm a, a college freshman at Rice University, and I'd really like to volunteer with you this summer. I know I only have basic science courses, but yeah, I can volunteer. And people actually called me back. It was great. And so, not many, I mean, it was 40 cold calls. Um, yeah, I only got about three callbacks. But hey, you know, it's all a numbers game. So I actually got the internship. It was great, it was fun. And so I would like to, I would like to leave you with that. You know, accept the situation and look for other solutions. So in summary, when birds swoop down and crap on your face, what you should do is <laughs> a, a, a passive way, which would be, eh, just go with the flow and hope you have a better day. 
And the three active ways were look for fun and stay curious, use mantras and accept the situation and look for solutions. So have a non-crappy day.